Hello and welcome to this edition of All About Hopkinton, the original HCAM series created to bring you the people and organizations that help make our community the great place that it is. I'm Jim Cousins, sitting in for Mary Arnott. There are a lot of people and groups out there dedicating their time, energy and talents to improve some aspect of life in Hopkinton. Now I am privileged to be sitting here talking with them and sharing their stories with you. Joining me today is Marla Moresco, a Down Syndrome mom advocate and an author. Marla, thanks for being on our show today. Thank you for having me. All right, appreciate the time. So let's first start with your story. Sure. Okay. So did you grow up around in the East Coast? Or? Uh, my husband and I did both grow up in New Jersey, mm -hmm. and then we moved to the Midwest and moved back to the East Coast. So okay. here we are in Boston. Yes. Or Hopkinton, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you been back? Uh, three years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you have a son who has Down syndrome, right? Correct, yes, Jacob. Jacob, and how old is he? He's 12. Okay, mm -hmm. so just starting middle school this He's year. He's just gonna be starting sixth grade, so a, a new transition for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit of your story? Sure, so Jacob was born on March 22nd, 2006, and uh, we did know um, from all of the tests that we, we had got, mm -hmm. that he was going to have Down syndrome. Um, and so we prepared ourselves as best you can yep. with that diagnosis and really just accepted it and um, basically moved just as the day he was born. It was just, we just moved forward mm -hmm. and, and lived our life and have been having a great time doing it and, yeah. you know, advocating for him in, in the schools and in our community. So. Um, you said something very quickly. So, you know, we knew and we prepared for it. That's mm -hmm. a big word, prepare. Mm -hmm. what, what were some of the things that you did? Basically, what I, I didn't do a lot of research. I promised my husband I wasn't going to do research <laughs> because really, in all, in all fairness, I mean, you know, Down syndrome is a very large diagnosis and, and it can affect um, children differently. Mm -hmm. So um, I, again, promised him I wouldn't do anything as far as that is concerned. Um, but what we did know was that Jacob had a heart condition. Um, so when I meant prepare, it was more preparing for him to have open heart surgery at six months old okay. and finding the right um, health personnel, professionals to um, do that for us. And, yep. and then basically reaching out to our local Down syndrome organization where, where we lived in Indiana and just, you know, getting our name out there and starting going to some of the new parent um meetings that they had. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how we, we were preparing for ourselves. I see. Yeah. How did you connect with them? Through the hospital? Yeah, actually the hospital, the social worker uh, connected us. And quite honestly, my, uh, my sister did a lot of research for us. So she actually had this whole nice little notebook ready, ready for me to sit down and start reading when I was ready to you know, take that new venture on. But yeah. um, she really looked and found the uh, Michiana Down Syndrome group which okay. was in Indiana. Okay. And so then it really was just getting on their website and their email list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was the group like? Did you, did you have meetings? Did you yeah, we, it was a great parent support group. Um, we did a lot of events. <coughs> Excuse me. We did a lot of events. We did buddy walks. Um, I was very vested in the group. I actually became a board member. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and basically it was really a great family support group. And we did a lot of educational um, seminars where we would bring people in from outside outside in the, the community to talk to us and just mm -hmm. help families with some of the financial um, struggles they were going through with health care and, and um, insurance and all that. So right. yeah, it was a, a great support network. Right. And um, what kind of network have you found out here now that you're back? Um, so the Massachusetts Down Syndrome Congress um, is a very large community of, um, it's you know a nonprofit here. and. Um, I'll be honest with you, as soon as I got here, uh -huh. I picked the phone up and I called the executive director, Maureen Gallagher, and said, do you have some time to talk? I want to get involved. I want to know what organizations you guys have, you know, what events you have, how I can get involved. And I actually sit on the public awareness committee. Okay. So I always get my hands right into it. Sure. I, I, I go right in. Yeah, that's great. That's <laughs> why it's, it's important. great you're here talking about yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's important because you want to be able to know what's out there mm -hmm. for your child and, you know, um, you know, being a part of the change. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, how large of a group is it, both like member-wise and kind of geographically area-wise? It's, it's a, I, I can't really give yeah. numbers. I don't That's know, fine. but it's a very large, a large organization. I mean, you have the National Down Syndrome mm -hmm. um, Society and you have the National Down Syndrome Congress. So those are the very large national, but from a state, um, it's a large 
organization. Um, yeah. I, I don't know numbers, okay. but it's pretty much here in the Commonwealth. And is your so. group for the whole yeah, state? Yeah, for the whole state. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so tell me a little bit about what it's like being uh, involved with that and kind of the things, the things that you do there. Yeah, so for, like I said, we just had the, the fifth annual uh, Down Syndrome Advocacy Day on the State House. Yep. And it, it's an important day for not only for our families, but for the self advocates as well to go there to the State House and, and meet our state legislators and ask for their support and funding for, you know, bills that are critical to our families, to, yeah. our, to our children. And um, it's a great opportunity. It's a family affair. Um, we, you know, we had Governor Baker there. We actually honored him because he is such a, a big um, advocate for mm -hmm. our families and um, it's a great day it's a great day to get our kids out there really advocating for themselves and you know walking the halls and going into these these built these offices and just sharing our stories with everyone mm. so so you kind of you kind of jumped into that day so let me ask you what does it mean that governor baker is a big advocate for you guys what does he do uh, Governor Baker, uh, he's a great guy. I mean, obviously, we, we know a lot of the things that he's done. I mean, he basically just signed, I think in 2016, he signed the um, National um, a Transplant and Organ uh -huh. Bill. And the, the one big bill that we are looking to get funding and he supports is the Higher Education Bill. Okay. Which would provide, obviously, uh, more opportunities for our children to go on to college if that is what they choose to do. Mm -hmm. It would actually um, open up oh, there were 29 colleges and universities here in the Commonwealth. Yep. It would provide them funding to um, provide programs for intellectual kids with intellectual disabilities. Oh, I see. So they have opportunities to go on to college again if that's what they choose to and and that's what we're pushing. And, yeah. And that's so, really cool. Yeah. I mean, I think there are a couple college and universities that do that right now, mm -hmm. but this legislation would open it up to all of the public colleges and mm -hmm. universities here in the Commonwealth. Okay. All right, so give me a flavor of what the day was like. What what did you guys do? How did it go? Yes, I it was <laughs> I I love it actually, and and let me preface it with saying some of the self advocates that I met and knew, um, I went with them as rep as a, uh, a unit to go to the Washington D.C. We were like the con congressional or whatever um, unit group uh -huh. to go from Massachusetts. Um, same thing for the advocacy day there at Congress okay. to walk Congress and, and ask for bills. So I had known some of these self advocates and I really wanted my son to meet them and shake hands. And, you know, it, it was exciting because the first thing that my son said to me was, uh, mom, I talk. And I said, no, not right. Not today, mm -hmm. honey, because he has, he's seen me speak at, in the schools. Um, yep. I'm a guest speaker for Hopkins for their understanding Di differences program. Um, every October I go into all of any school that Jacob's in and I actually go and speak to the his class mm -hmm. about Down syndrome awareness and I always bring him up and I bring him up and I have him speak a little bit and tell everybody his name and you know he has Down syndrome because I, I want them to know but I, that it you know that's that's what he has yeah. it doesn't define him that's just what he has yeah and so um, I feel good about that because I, I think I'm setting the stage for him if you will to then start self-advocating for himself, find, mm -hmm. you know, just learning. I mean, public speaking is hard, and yes. and and I want him to get comfortable shaking hands with, you know, governors and, you know, state legislators, and, and really going in there and feeling confident about his story and mm -hmm. why he needs to share that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, right now I have been his voice, but he's fourteen, uh, he's twelve, and we know at fourteen is when um, our children actually become part of the IEP process oh. at our schools. Yep. So I actually just had Jacob. Um, be a part of it when he was 12. I said, why wait for 14? <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, so was it really um, scary for him at the beginning? No. No? No, huh? he's he's a big ham. Yeah. He, he really, he's very um, outgoing mm -hmm. and he loves to meet people. So, and I, again, I think that's what's important is that we make him a part of it. Yeah. You know, um, and so no, he wasn't scared at all. <laughs> he actually <laughs> wanted to get right in there. <laughs> that's great. So was the day pretty focused on meeting congressional members and talking about bills that were coming up and asking for support for it? Yeah, so we actually had um, a, pa a pamphlet from the Massachusetts Down Syndrome Congress. They had us very well prepared about the bills that um, are uh, you know, up to be um, supported. And so we went to um, uh, Senator um, Spoka and Senator um, 
Dykem's office, and uh -huh. um, we went there. Not, neither of them were there, unfortunately, but we got to speak to their um, their aides, and we left them with our pamphlet of information and why it's important for them to um, support these bills. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that's happening in that realm other than the higher education one? Um, they do have a couple bills out there. Um, I can't think of them off the top of my head because the higher education is the one that's important for us. Oh, um, so exciting. What yeah. a great concept. Well, and we just, you know, Governor Baker was supportive of the, of the ABLE Acts. I don't know if you, the ABLE accounts. And uh -huh. so what that allows is that our children can then have money in their name. Okay. Um, because what was happening was they couldn't have meaningful employment, if you will, yep. because you weren't allowed to have so much money in your name because or you will lose, your, you will lose your benefits. Yes. So the ABLE accounts now provide that opportunity for our kids to have meaningful jobs now. And uh, get. How, when did that come about? Um, that was two years ago, three years ago. Wow, yeah. that's huge. That's like that it's, com commonsensical. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's amazing that we've gotten to this point where, you know, we're actually now seeing the value Yes. of meaningful employment for our children and that they shouldn't lose their benefits because they want to work. Right, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, so other than that day, right, what else does the group do? Do you do like, um, like walk-a-thons? Yeah, we is, have, um, there's three big buddy walks that are coming up. Yeah. Um, and obviously we know October is Down Syndrome Awareness Month and that's when one of the big walks is. They ha just had a, um, a hockey night where they did a fundraising um, event with the hockey team and I think they just did something at Fenway they they have like a family night uh -huh. where one of the families will go out and throw the first pitch okay um, so it's a family night where we're you know the Massachusetts Down Syndrome Congress is being recognized yeah um, and we do a lot of um, educational programs we just had our annual conference again where we're bringing in speakers to talk to our families about um, anything from you know sleep apnea to behavior to mm -hmm. um, you know how to master IEPs or so it's it's a wide range of um, opportunities that families can take part in right right um, do you also do, do you have any kind of like social activities on like a smaller level? They do have um, like new family not, parent night. Um, I am not part of that because obviously Massachusetts Down Syndrome Congress is in Burlington. So it's, <laughs> it is a little bit of a check. Yeah. Um, but they do have a new parent program um, where they um, will bring have family, you know, family nights and some of the new parents can start getting to meet each other yeah. and, you know, ask the questions and get have their kids just play with one another in a very safe, non-judgmental, yeah. you know, room and just enjoy and celebrate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you find the environment over the past 12 years has um, evolved? Yes, I know. Okay. That's one um, I, I do think that, you know, um, there's always room for growth, for uh -huh. sure. Um, but I do think that society is becoming more accepting of, of individuals with Down syndrome. They're welcoming them into their schools and their community and in their workplaces. Um, but there are obviously, there's always work to do. Uh -huh. um, and I think, you know, again, when it comes to education, I think it's important that, you know, families get involved. They, you know, they really have to be involved with the schools in order to really help their child. Right. Because um, they really are their child's voice during that whole process. Mm -hmm. So until 14, when right. the child is then involved. Right. So just kind of interested, if you, looking back, like if you knew what you know now and it was starting all over again, uh, was there anything that you would have done differently or would have sought out earlier or tried to get involved with? Um, I would, honestly, I would say no in the sense because I am actually, as, as my, my husband is, we are very active. Yeah. We're very involved. We're involved with the Special Olympics here. Um, we are going to be launching our, a nonprofit at the end of the summer that, you know, provides financial support for um, families with a child with Down syndrome for early intervention and therapeutic services um, because those are critical yes. for, uh, for any child that has a disability. Um, but I, I think what I would say to people is that they really need to get involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, if they want to see change, they need to be a part of that change. They need to um, be involved, go to those new parent gr nights, yep. you know, be involved in the school, show up for those meetings as best they can. Because right. it's, it's really, it's, it's important and it's critical for your child. Right. Yeah. 
Okay, can you tell me some of the other, you're on, um, what, what committee did you say you were on? Oh, the Public Awareness Committee. Public Awareness mm -hmm. Committee. Like, what other kind of committees do they have? Uh, they have the Education Committee. They have, um, you know, Fundraising Committee. Um, I am actually also a member of the um, Inclusive Education for the National Down Syndrome Society. So that's new for me. And okay. I'm very excited about that because uh -huh. that's a big honor to be part of that group. Um, but we're, we're talking about, obviously, inclusion in the classrooms and how we can help um, schools do a better job of including our kids. Right. You know. Um, so that's really, you know, the Public Awareness Committee here in Massachusetts, um, we talk about some of the campaigns. So um, we, we, we're actually talking about October, the Down Syndrome Awareness Month. Yep. And, um, you know, if you didn't know, March 21st is World Down Syndrome Day. Mm -hmm. And the reason they picked that is because it's 321, and Down Syndrome is a three copies of the 21st chromosome. Okay. So the world celebrates that day, and we, if the Public Awareness Committee got together, and we talked about what our campaign was going to look like to spread awareness. Yep, yep. Um, so how did you how did you come across this new organization that you're now excited about being a part of? The National Down Syndrome yeah. Society. That they, they are everybody probably knows about yeah. them when you have a child with Down syndrome because they are the national ones. They they are the one the the leading rights organization for um, individuals with Down syndrome and um, picking up the phone, getting involved, you know, letting people know that I want to be involved. And that's really what, that's really how I started it. It was starting attending some of their advocacy days. Yeah. And, um, you know, just really picking up the phone and just saying yeah. to people that I want to be a part of this. And yeah. so when I was just in um, D.C., they invited me to be a part of the um, Inclusive Education Task Force. Mm -hmm. So, again, like I said, I was very excited to be asked because yeah. that's, that's important. That's setting the stage for... Um, all of our children's right. education for the future. Right. So. so now tell me a little bit about this new nonprofit that's coming on. Sure. The scene. So it's special and determined, and um, this has been a, a, a project of love for my family. And basically, what it's 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 based on is that we want to provide financial support for families um, that have a child with uh, Down syndrome and provide them opportunities through grants to get the services they need, whether it's like uh, therapeutic services or early intervention that are critical for our kids. Because some health insurances don't cover them. Mm -hmm. um, and I know for us, we have, when we were in Indiana, we had a, an amazing health insurance company, but they didn't cover some of my son's early intervention or therapy services. So it became out of pocket for us. And that gets very costly yeah. after a while. But yet he needed the services. Yeah. And so, you know, it was a struggle deciding what do we do? Do we, you know, not go on vacation mm -hmm. because we know that this money is, is, is earmarked yeah. for his education, um, for his therapies. And so we just decided we don't really want other families to have to, to go through that hardship. And so um, that is our organization, and wow. or that's our nonprofit. And like I said, we're hoping to launch that at the end of the summer. Now, when you say we, who is the we? We is my family, my husband, Paul, and my uh, daughter, Amanda. Uh -huh. She's um, actually in Philadelphia. She's just graduated with her master's okay. um, from Temple. So she just got a job out there in Philadelphia. Congratulations. And so, thank you. So she's a part of the organization, and we do have um, a select few people that we have asked to be a part of our board. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are they in the Hawkington community or more in the, the wider? They're in the wide, you know? yeah. We originally, some of them started out because of, we lived in Indiana, and that's kind of where we started the whole process. Um, but yep. we do have many contacts, obviously, here. Um, through the hospitals and whatnot that we have um, reached out and asked if they would like to be part of our board. Right, right. So that's really awesome, giving money to the people who need it, but you have to get that money mm -hmm. in order to give it. So what are you thinking? Are you thinking sponsorships? Are you going to do Fundraising, events, fundraising? yeah. We have, we have fundraising coming up, and, um, you know, there's, there's some thoughts uh, that we have with regards to some nights, you know, some uh, fundraising nights and obviously some golf outings. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> my, my whole family is involved with golf, and okay. we're part of the Hopkinton Country Club. So, uh, yeah, so it would definitely involve golf outings for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And uh, is, it, is, is, your, is your nonprofit all set now? So, like, do you have an area that you're servicing, or how does um, that work? It would just, I mean, it hasn't officially been set up quite. I mean, it's been set up, but it's not been launched. So okay. it's not selective just for a, a specific area, because mm -hmm. we would be taking um, grant applications 
from across the you know, United right. States. So, right. um, but because we would be new, we would have minimal funds to mm -hmm. be able to provide grants. But we are hoping that someday we would be able to help everybody. Yeah, yeah. So um, you've been back for about three years. Mm -hmm. So Jacob's been in the uh, the Hopkinton school systems. Yes. Uh, how's it been going? It's been going well. I mean, he's got a wonderful support network of okay. friends. Um, his friends are amazing. They mm -hmm. really are. I mean, and I, I think that's what's important for him, for him is, like I had mentioned before, he's outgoing. I mean, he's part of everything. I mean, he, he's at camp right now at the Hopkinton, Hopkinton Country Club. Um, he does Special Olympics. Uh, he's involved in anything, you yeah. know, anything and everything. Because, I, again, I think it's important because the way I look at it when I go and I speak to the schools, I look at these kids as our future leaders, uh -huh. and I want them to understand and have empathy for individuals with disabilities across the board. That, you know, if they're sitting as an employer one day and an individual with a disability walks in, they can be like, wow, I was in school with Jacob, and he was a cool dude, or, yeah. you know, just bringing that awareness to them that they can. Yeah. You know, not to look at their disability, but look at their capabilities. Right. And that's what I, 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 sh I hope that they're starting to see, is that Jacob really is a part of us, yeah. a part of our community. Yeah. I'm wondering, can you tell me, um, as a mother of a child that has to have Down syndrome, mm -hmm. what is the most difficult aspect that you have to work Sleep. with? Sleep. <laughs> oh, you mean like all the Sleep. rest of us? <laughs> um, you know, it's just, it's, there's a lot to juggle. I mean, to be honest with you, and I know that everybody's juggling it, but, um, you know, it's, it's constant learning and, you know, constant knocking on doors and advocating for, for our children yep. so that they do have equal opportunity. And um, it's really understanding, you know, what all, what, what all that means yeah. and, you know, the education behind that and doing the research. And, you know, again, like I said, the sleep. I mean, you know, Jacob is, has always been, we were told from the moment he was in my belly that he is going to, to keep you busy. That is exactly <laughs> what the cardiologist told us. And he has been. I mean, he's not the best sleeper. And uh -huh. so, you know, the, the health part of it, uh, um, you know, Jacob is, is actually very healthy, but it's just, you know. There's other things he doesn't sleep well. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Like best eater, you know. It's just little things like so that. So basically, stuff that everybody deals with. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. All right. So uh, also contributing to um, perhaps your lack of sleep. Is there anything else that you've been doing recently? Uh, besides pushing for our nonprofit, yeah. um, I did just write a children's book. Oh, did you? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to think, what have I been doing lately? <laughs> yes, I did. I just published a children's book, um, Adventures with the Special Traveler. Uh -huh. And it, it is a children's book. I did go read it in, um, the high, in Hopkins to the kids. Um, and it's about, you know, a child with Down syndrome who loves to travel. Yep. And that, you know, I, I want families to realize that although you may have gotten that diagnosis, that, that shouldn't stop you from seeing the world. Yeah. yeah, you're going to have to plan a little bit differently. Um, but that still should make you go out and see the world even more, you know, and bringing your family with you. And it, it, in the back of it, there are some references about, um, you know, special needs travel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that is my, that is my new venture. I, I, <laughs> I say that like, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, so I just published a book. But, yeah, yeah. I'm very proud of that book. <laughs> yeah, congratulations <laughs> on that, you. too. That's a great thing. Thank you. All right, well, we're wrapping up on time here. So um, I also know that you've recently been on another show that we produce here yes. at HCAM, yes. um, Hopkinton Coffee Break with the Real Housewives of Hopkinton. That so is correct. So I encourage our viewers to check that out. Yeah. And um, I want to thank you not only for uh, informing us about it, but also for all the work that you do for thank this you. population that we have in our community and our wider community thank here you. in the United States. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Have a great day. Okay. And thank you for joining us for this show and hearing about this wonderful program. For more information about learning to be an advocate for your child with Down syndrome and information concerning All About Hopkinton, find us on hcam.tv. If you or someone you know is having an impact on our community, we want to hear about it. Send us an email and perhaps you'll find them sharing their story right here on All About Hopkinton. I'm Jim Cousins, sitting in for Mary Arnott, and thanks for watching.
you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, a family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how you can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance. In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose, and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life.